Hey everybody, thanks for watching my channel, Giddy Up Adventures. My name is Matthew. Today we're going to talk about my five tips to help keep you warm when you're out camping on your motorcycle. everybody so let's get into it and I'm gonna do a little disclaimer at the beginning of this uh, the Sun has been in and out of the clouds and every time the clouds are good it starts raining so this one's gonna be uh, it's gonna have some mistakes and pauses and ums in it anyways uh, first off I wanted to say you know there's a lot of uh, videos out there about how to's with motorcycle stuff and uh, what I bring to the table is about 12 years of camping on my motorcycle. I also have uh, uh, over 10 years working in the outdoor industry. So that means I've talked to reps from the different companies that make all the things like sleeping bags and outdoor clothing, as well as hearing customers talk about it. So I'll set somebody up with a sleeping bag and then I'll get feedback from them. And uh, yeah, like I said, over 10 years of doing that sort of thing and hearing a lot of uh, good, good information from people that I've sold tents to, sold sleeping bags to. So let's get into it. All right. First and foremost, let's do start with a sleeping bag. This here is a North Face Blue Kazoo. I've had this since, I believe, 1992. It still works all right. It's a 20 degree bag, and I think 20 degrees is a good kind of all-rounder. I choose down because it's breathable across a wide range of temperatures. So if it's 40 degrees out, it's really, uh, it's, I don't get too hot in it, or if it's 50 degrees, you can always unzip it and hang a leg out, but down is really good at being breathable across a wide spectrum of temperatures. The downside of down is if it gets wet, the feathers shrink and it's useless. So you need to put this in a trash bag inside your dry bag or inside your whatever your luggage is. I have a giant loop bag, so they're waterproof, so it's not an issue. A couple quick things about the sleeping bag. Uh, one reason that this thing still works after 20 years, before I get into my sleeping bag, I take baby wipes and I get all the sunscreen and sweat and dirt and bug spray off of myself. It helps me sleep better, but it certainly makes the bag last longer. This thing's pretty dingy, but uh, what I most often do when it gets dirty, I'll just take a wet sponge and wipe the, fi the fabric on the outside because that's really what's dirty. It's not the stuff on the inside and then I'll dry it with a towel or a paper towel. So that's something you can do. If you do use detergent, use down specific stuff you can get at large outdoor retailers. Um, my most commonly used bag is a 30 degree quilt style, but this video is about keeping you warm in the colder months, and a mummy style is gonna envelop you and really keep you the most toasty. So that is sleeping bags. Uh, I'll do a whole video on sleeping bags. I, I'm embarrassed to say, but I think I today I counted 12 uh, sleeping pads and probably just as many uh, sleeping bags. So I've got a, I've got issues with that stuff. Anyways, so with sleeping pads, there's lots of kinds to get, and this is what keeps the ground from sucking all the warmth out of you. If you've ever sat on a concrete slab or a concrete bench or something and then got got up, you'll notice your butt stays cold for like 30 minutes. You do not want that happening while you're sleeping in the cold. The ground can do the same thing. It'll just suck that warmth right out of you. So you need a barrier. Uh, so on the simple end of the spectrum, you have, this is a Thermarest uh, Z-Lite. It's a foam closed cell uh, mattress. Uh, sometimes I'll use it in conjunction with an air mattress, but it is uh, the bare minimum of what you should bring. It will keep you off the ground. It will insulate you, but it's not the most comfortable. Underneath there, I have a camp rest, which is what I use for car camping. This thing's, uh, I don't know, two and a half inches thick. It's an old school one. It's 25 inches wide. Really luxurious, uh, especially if you use it in conjunction with other ones. But uh, a little bulky for motorcycle camping. This is a uh, Thermarest, uh, it's called a Travel Light Regular. It's an older one, but still takes up quite a bit of room. Where the modern sleeping pads have gone is to these super tiny ones. 
They're able to do that because there's no foam in here. It's just air. This is a big Agnes air core, three inches thick. So super comfortable, uh, you know, three inches. There's no chance when I roll on my hips that I'm going to uh, bottom out. And this really keeps you warm. The trade-off, of course, like everything backpacking or everything outdoorsy, if it's lightweight and compact, the price goes up. So these are, uh, I think they're just under 200 bucks. Uh, there's, a, there's a range of them, so, though, so you can get them for like 139, I think, to 200 bucks. So that's what I use for sleeping pads. All right, next I've got, um, I'm wearing them right now, layers. So if I'm doing anything outdoors, paddling, uh, cycling, motorcycling, hiking, I don't have cotton on my skin. I'm wearing a cotton t-shirt, but it's uh, over the top of my synthetic. These synthetic things last for a really long time. Um, I think I've probably had this 15 years. So I do a base layer of synthetic. It comes in different weights. You can do lightweight or midweight. And then on top of that, I'll do a sweater or a puffy jacket. Uh, and speaking of puffy jackets, this is a something that's with me every time I'm out in the woods. It's uh, the Patagonia Micro Puff. The reason I love this one is it is synthetic, so it will keep me warm if it gets wet. So it doesn't matter if it's raining. Of course, it's starting to rain right now as I say that. It's going to keep me dry. Sorry, it's going to keep me warm even if it gets wet. But what I really love about it is it disappears into nothing. It folds into its own pocket and gets really small. So this is always with me. I carry it in my little camelback, and uh, I never don't have it. A lot of times I'll sleep with this on at night if it's a little bit chillier. So that is a great thing to have. Uh, on the bait, on the bottom, I wear uh, also synthetic long underwear. And then while you're in your sleeping bag, why not do layers there too? I can wear two layers of sock. And that really makes a huge difference. Um, it's a good idea to have two pairs of socks with you anyways, because if one gets wet, uh, you know, it may take a little while to dry. The cool thing about synthetics is, or wool, is they wick the moisture from your body. I've actually gone kayaking in this orange top, and if I had done a Eskimo roll in the kayak and just kept moving all afternoon, this thing would be dry in 45 minutes again if, I, if I'm being active. So. Synthetics are the way to go. You want to avoid cotton on your skin especially, but for the most part, leave the cotton at home if you're doing outdoorsy stuff. Uh, certainly don't bring jeans. <clears throat> All right, the final layer, uh, when I'm in my sleeping bag, this sleeping bag has a hood, but to get really toasty, I'll slip on one of these. Um, not very attractive, but it does the trick. And if it's getting light out or there's just uh, light around, I can pull it over my eyes. I have really sensitive eyes. Okay, what else? Another tip for, okay, this one is a little, uh, it's something I've, I can't believe it's so obvious that I didn't uh, think of it earlier. Actually, the most obvious thing for keeping warm at a campsite is a fire, but since you can't have a fire inside your tent, and if you're motorcycling, it's not always practical to have firewood with you, and here in the Pacific North Northwest, all the wood's wet anyways, so you gotta find other ways to stay warm. Uh, but the secret here that I have is hand warmers uh, and foot warmers. You can stick these between your two layers of sock, and man, it's nice to just be able to have that. Uh, and sometimes I wait till I, you know, I always have to, I'm an old, so I have to wake up and pee several times a night. So I'll, uh, I'll savor it like, uh, like a treat for later, and I'll open up the package, you know, maybe at one or two in the morning, and then it's like, ah. So you have that toasty little thing, or you can put them in your jacket pockets too. Those work great. So hand warmers, foot warmers. Uh, so those are five, and then here's two bonus ones. This may also be a little obvious, but if you don't put some fuel in your body, there's no way for your body to make warmth. So uh, I love these Peak Two meals. They, I don't know what they're doing differently, but they're so much yummier than the other brands that I've tried. And uh, everything they, that they make is exceptional. Uh, I've really been impressed with it. But when you have that hot meal before you go to bed, you just feel extra cozy and your body has fuel to make warmth. All right, the, in the same token, I guess you could do um, hot drinks. So have a hot cocoa or hot tea before you go to sleep, a decaf, um, that will help go a long way. Um, and then one of my old tried and true favorites, this is probably not endorsed by really anybody, 
but uh, maybe even Nalgene wouldn't like me saying this, but I've done it for a long time and it works great. Before I go to bed, if it's really cold, if I can see my breath, I will fill up a Nalgene bottle with boiling water. You have to, have to, have to leave room on top. If you don't, this thing's gonna expand and blow the F up and you're gonna be drenched, sorry, you're gonna be scalded and then you're gonna be drenched. And you don't wanna be sitting in a wet down sleeping bag with burns all over you. Miserable. But if you keep the lid on tight, if you leave space at top, I do about two inches, and then put that at the foot of your sleeping bag, you'll be amazed, but that will still be warm in the morning. It's a cool little trick. I've done it for decades and it always works. Uh, finally, the a couple things that don't work, I thought I would mention. Selling tents to people over the years, there was this misconception that people had that a tent would keep you warm. And I guess to a degree it keeps you dry and it keeps the wind off of you. And if you have a four season tent, um, I've never really needed one, but uh, they, they do have minimal wind. But most people are going to be using a three season tent. It doesn't really add any warmth. Likewise, the space blankets. I'm going to do a whole video. Uh, I did one already. If you, if you search on my channel and go back, you'll see a night where I spent in the woods with no sleeping bag and no tent and one of these, and it was pretty miserable. But I'm going to do a remake. I really want to know if these uh, emergency blankets are useless or if it's just a um, thing they're trying to sell you or if it actually works. So I'll be doing a test on that. So you should uh, subscribe so you can see how that turns out. And on this channel too, if you look at my homepage, you'll see that I have tons of videos on all kinds of things. And uh, I really appreciate you watching. Hit the notification bell so you can see more videos like this. Thanks.